Hello folks, this is Jordan Maxwell, and this, this happens to be a, a new video. The title is Cosmocrats, and their insidious influence on the world today. Cosmocrats simply means cosmos is the world, uh, and crats is rulers, people who rule. So the cosmocrats are the world rulers. God knows we got plenty of them. Um, it's interesting that in Ephesians, in the New Testament, and the Bible, in the book of Ephesians 6, 12, the Apostle Paul uh, said that, he said this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's from the King James. So the rulers of the darkness, that implies that the darkness and the incredible evil that's going on in the world, there are people who know what they're doing, and they're doing it purposely. So they're the rulers of darkness. That's what we want to talk about. Here's Woodrow Wilson, the President of the United States. And we'll see him later on in the presentation. But he said, this is a quote from Woodrow Wilson, Since I entered politics, I have chiefly had men's views confided to me privately. Some of the biggest men in the United States in the field of commerce and manufacture, they are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, so interlocked and so completely and so pervasive that they better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. Interesting. John F. Kennedy, who was assassinated in 63, said about a week before they killed him, he said, quote, There's a plot in this country to enslave every man, woman, and child. And before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. Well, he never got a chance. He was assassinated seven days later. In order to understand the world crises we're in today, you need to go back about 4,400 years ago to the Mesopotamian sun worship that later became the Aton worship of ancient Egypt. Here we have, again, as I said, uh, 2350 to 2200 BC. That would be about uh, 4300 years ago. Uh, we see the rising sun god Shemesh, which today in Hebrew, Shemesh is the, the sun. And so, but this goes back thousands of years before Hebrews ever existed. The rising sun god Shemesh is cutting his way through the mountains of the east on this greenstone cuneiform cylinder seal, showing the major solar deity of the Akkadian dynasty, which ruled Mesopotamia about 2550 to 2200 BC. Uh, to the right, we see the ancient Akkadian sun god Shemesh is now the Old Testament God of Israel, who is today known as El Shaddai, which means the more things change, the more they stay the same. Same old religion, same old gods. Here is another reference work uh, picturing the God of the mountains, El Shaddai. In the Hebrew, most Christians will know that's the God of the Bible, the Old Testament God of the Bible, El Shaddai, which is actually, in point of fact, the old rising sun god, Shemesh, of the Akkadian dynasty. So here's the rising sun god, Shemesh, cutting his way through the mountains, okay? And now we all are aware, most people are aware, that in ancient Egypt, the winged sun disk symbol was a symbol for the sun god in Egypt. The sun disk symbol was called the Aton. And that's very, very important. The Aton, A-T-O-N. You'll see why it's so important. 
not just because it's a sun symbol, but that word, Aton. So here is the sun in Egypt. As I said, it's referred to as the Aton. So almost 4,500 years later, the sun symbol still dominates the world of mankind in every respect. Boy, that's the truth. Everywhere you look is the sun rising behind mountains. The ancient cultures around the earth have served and used the sunrise headdress. All the ancient peoples wore sunrise headdresses. <clears throat> Here we see the old ancient uh, Phoenician, Canaanite, Sumerian, uh, Assyrian warriors, and on their helmets you'll see a rising sun. Rising sun helmets. And you'll see that in the Aztec and Maya cultures too. In Mexico, the sun as a helmet. It's, uh, we see that quite a bit in all the ancient peoples of the world, including the Native Americans, American Indians. Uh, the sunrise headdress. And it's celebrated around the world, but especially in Central and South America and Native Americans, you will see this idea of a sunrise headdress. And this idea of the rising sun headdress goes back thousands of years. For our purposes today, we will go back to the ancient Roman Empire. So in Imperial Rome, sunrise helmets. They always wore sunrise helmets. And that's very important because as I told you before, the sun rising in Egypt was called the Aton. And here in Rome, you'll see the Roman soldiers wearing sunrise helmets. In fact, in ancient Rome, there was an imperial Roman sun cult. And that's what we want to look at today, this imperial Roman sun cult. Here is the imperial Roman sun cult god. His name was Mithra, M-I-T-H-R-A, Ra, Mithra. The imperial sun god of the Roman Empire. And the top right, you will see Mithra as he is pictured today. This is the other one. The bigger picture is the ancient Roman god, Mithra. And here is one of the Caesars. And you will see, in the middle of his chest, you will see a sun god. And beneath it, an eagle. That's very important, too. I'll tell you about eagles in just a moment. But the Caesar is wearing the sun god on his chest and the uh, and the eagle so we're talking about the imperial cult of ancient rome today it's still in rome we call the imperial sun cult of the ancient roman empire today we call it the vatican it's still the old ancient roman sun cult today the popes are continuing to promote sun worship the Aton worship, the sun god of Rome. Here in modern day imperial Roman sun cult of Solus Invicti. This was a, uh, this is a picture of a mosaic that was in the Vatican. And in the Vatican they have uh, pictures like this where the priest and the holy ones, the priest, are raising their hands in worship of God's son. The light of the world. In Rome, Iusus, Jesus, is God's son. The light of the world. Well, that's what the Vatican's trying to show you. The priests are worshiping the sun god, Solus Invicti. On the earth today, the ancient imperial Roman sun cult is controlled by and run by, and the powers behind it are called the Jesuits. The Jesuits are a very powerful secret society operating out in the Vatican, outside of the Vatican, around the world to promote, to perfect and protect and promote the old ancient uh, sun god of Imperial Rome, 
the Jesuits. Don't ever forget that term, Jesuits. Do some research and look it up. The, you'll see the sun symbol above. Uh, Encyclopedia said the Jesuits were organized by religious zealot Ignatius Loyola. They have they have been identified as controllers behind the U.S. government. They are themselves merely lieutenants of the cult of Vatan. The image of their emblem leaves us no doubt as to their occult history and the agenda. So this is the old ancient uh, Egyptian worship of the sun god Aton, uh, but today it is uh, now in the hands of the Vatican, the Jesuits. In this book called Conspiracy Against God and Man, the study of the beginnings and early history of the great conspiracy. Now, with this short background, we will now unfold the greatest conspiracy ever devised by the ancient fascist Roman Empire against the people of this earth. Uh, Arthur E. Waite, uh, a well-known author many years ago, he said that beneath the broad tide of human history there flow the stealthy undercurrent of the secret societies, which frequently determine in the depths the changes that take place upon the surface. He was right. Uh, regarding the same secret and powerful forces, Benjamin Disraeli, the first Jewish uh, uh, English statesman in England back in 1856, regarding the same secret and powerful forces, Benjamin Disraeli, the English statesman, gave testimony in the British House of Commons on July 14, 1856. On that occasion, he said, there is in Italy, this is a quote, there is in Italy, Vatican, a power which we seldom mention in this house, I mean the secret societies. It is useless to deny because it's impossible to conceal that the great part of Europe, the whole of Italy and France, and a great portion of Germany, to say nothing of other countries, is covered with a network of these secret societies, just as the surfaces of the earth are now being covered with railroads. He went on to say in 1876, this really was moved to make the following statements, quote, the governments of the present day have to deal not merely with other governments, with emperors and kings and ministers, but also with the secret societies which have everywhere their unscrupulous agents and can at the last moment upset all the government's plans. Here's another occultist out of, uh, out of uh, Europe. Much of what this historian had to say is enlightening. He cites, for example, the explicit ter testimony of one of whose himself in close contact with the inner circle of the secret societies in Europe, and may be presumed to possess accurate knowledge of its activities. He was referring to this doctor who, in the April 1914 issue of the French occultist uh, magazine, Hysteria, Hysteria, under the pseudonym of Pappas, he wrote this, Side by side with the international politics of each state, there exist certain obscure organizations of international politics. The men that take part in these councils are not the professional politicians or the brilliantly dressed ambassadors, but certain unpretentious unknown men, high financiers, who are superior to the vain ephemeral politicians who imagine that they govern the world. What are these obscure organizations of international politics? They are the secret societies organized in small groups. With regard to the goals of these obscure organizations, Benjamin Disraeli had said 50 years earlier, quote, 
They do not want a constitutional government. They do not want the amalgamation of institutions. They want to change the tenor of the land. Obama's theme was change. Get it? They want to change the tenor of the land, drive out the present owners of the soil, and put an end to ecclesiastical of, uh, establishments. Change. Better wake up. Here is Dr. Bella Dodd, a former member of the Executive Committee of the Communist Party of the United States. When she testified about communist subversion to a Senate committee back in 1952, Dr. Bella Dodd was on the, uh, you know, the committee, executive committee of the Communist Party in America. And to cite contemporary testimony, we can refer to Dr. Bella Dodd, who, as a result of her extensive communist activity in America, she concluded, quote, I think the communist conspiracy is merely a branch of a much bigger conspiracy. Very, very observing, very important statement that communism was merely a part of something far, far bigger. Now, let's look for a few moments at a few of the stacks of documents and articles that will explain this story better. Here is something called the 11th Report, Senate Investigating Committee on Education. The subject of this particular report to the California Senate, as you will see, is published by the Senate of the State of California. This is in uh, 1951, and that's uh, called The Opposition to Loyalty, published by the State of California, 11th Report. <clears throat> in the introduction, it says, for the United States to join a world government would mean to haul down the American flag and all that it represents in sovereignty and force it to fly beneath the flag of a super state in which we would have only a minor role. World government outvoting us, the U.S., 15 to 1, would determine the amount of our taxes, the size of our armies, the value of our currency, and even our boundaries and territorial limitations. I don't believe the American people understand that, said the representative Lawrence Smith from Wisconsin. The boundaries, even our boundaries, would be open and territorial limitations. Here's the letter of transmittal. Here's the uh, table of contents, and down here we see uh, Soviet education propaganda and communism an article called Communism is Not a Legitimate Social Science. It says on page 168, since many intelligent persons, even in high official positions, do not appear to have acquainted themselves with the real nature and seriousness of communism, it is perhaps appropriate to give briefly some really informative and authentic data concerning it. Communism and Russia are by no means synonymous. Russia merely occupies the unfortunate position of being communism's first victim. Communism is synonymous with world revolution and seeks the destruction of all nations, including the abolishment of patriotism, religion, marriage, the family, private property, all political and civil liberties and the establishment of a worldwide dictatorship of the so-called proletariat, which is, in fact, an autocratic, self-constituted dictatorship by a small group of self-perpetuating revolutionists, liars, and murderers. Communism is not a social science. As says on the bottom, communism, sometimes called Marxist communism, is not a legitimate social science, but a hypocritical co conspiracy to destroy all civilization and to establish in its stead a worldwide autocratic barbarism. My God, that's what we got today. 
worldwide autocratic barbarism while the, all of Western civilization is being destroyed. Well, this was back in 1936 that this was known. Here is an important quote from that California state document. So-called modern communism is apparently the same hypocritical and deadly world conspiracy to destroy civilization that was founded by the secret order of the Illuminati in Bavaria on May 1st, 1776. That's why so many things that happen in America and around the world, you always hear it happening on May 1st. You better wake up. And that raised its head in our, and raised its hoary head in our colonies here at critical periods before the adoption of our federal constitution. See the book World Revolution by Nesta Webster. The world revolutionary conspiracy appears to have been so well organized to be ever continuing and ever on the alert to take advantage of every opportunity presenting itself or that the conspirators could create. It is significant in this connection that as early as 1783, when unsettled conditions and dissatisfaction in some quarters had arisen in the American colonies, a subversive anonymous sermons were circulated among the colonial army to incite dissatisfaction and rebellion. George Washington immediately called the army together, and in addressing the army, George Washington used this significant language, quote, this is taken from page 86, 87, volume 4, Marshall's Life on Washington. George Washington said this to his military. My God, what can this writer have in view by recommending such measures? Can he be a friend to this army? Can he be a friend to this country? Rather, is he not an insidious foe, some emissary perhaps from New York, plotting the ruin of both? by sowing seeds of discord and separation between the civil and military powers of the continent? And what a compliment does he pay to our understanding when he recommends such measures in either alternative or impractical in their nature? Some emissary from New York. It is plain that Washington believed the center of this secret conspiracy so far as this country was concerned to be located in New York and felt it to be his duty to make such a direct allusion. The second paragraph talks about the recognition of May 1st, 1776 as the founding date of the World Revolution conspiracy is not difficult to understand when it is realized that May Day is frequently celebrated even in recent times by rioting and bloodshed on a worldwide scale. This is important. It, went, it was not until 1847 or 1848 that the communist conspirators in Europe who had theretofore operated in secret came out in the open with the Manifesto of the Communist Party by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, boldly proclaiming against practically everything upon which civilization is based, against God, religion, the family, individual freedom and liberty, and so forth. So it talks about what the planning, what the plan was. And, and it's true that in New York was the main headquarters for the world communist movement in New York City. New York, the Empire State. In issuing this manifesto, the communist conspirators evidently believed the time had arrived with the aid of ignorant victims, and God knows we have plenty of them. This is important. So we'll read it again. In issuing this manifesto, the communist conspirators evidently believed that the time had arrived when, with the aid of ignorant victims, a worldwide takeover could be accomplished. But there was not enough ignorant victims then, and the expected coup failed. The communist conspirators in Europe thereupon, and in New York, thereupon conceived the plan for the future. 
of supplementing the long-established secret conspiracy in existence all the way back to May 1st, 1776. Now, with an unremittent public campaign for victims among the ignorant of all nations, and in an attempt to hide from view the underlying hypocritical conspiracy existing since 1776, it was decided that in such public campaigns, the Manifesto of 1848 should be heralded as the founding date of communism. 1848. No, it goes all the way back to May 1st, 1776. But in such a public campaign, the Manifesto of 1848 should be heralded as the founding date of communism, and Karl Marx falsely proclaimed as its author. Karl Marx was not the author of the Communist Manifesto. It goes on to say, the communists have become so bold that they publicly proclaim some of their outrageous aims and purposes, previously concealed and disavowed. But on April 15, 1932, George S. Counts, who was carried in printed literature of the Communist Moscow University uh, back in the sessions of 1935 as a member of the said University National Advisory Council, George S. Counts, uh, uh, communist in knowing and working with Moscow, he published a book called Dare the Schools to Build a New Social Order. The teachers, he said, quote, the teachers should deliberately reach for power and then make the most of their conquest in their firm conviction, as my firm conviction, to the extent that they are permitted to fashion the curriculum. So what he's saying is that the school system in America should be a, a totally Marxist, Leninist, communist operation, and that the teachers should make sure that they bring in world communism into the classroom. Now, in the book Secret Societies and Subversive Movements by Nesta Webster, uh, on, on the 12th chapter, it talks about secret societies in England. A fascinating book called Secret Societies and Subversive Movements by Nesta Webster. Talking about the secret societies in England, on page 325 toward the center, it says, In the opinion, this is Nesta Webster writing about a, a lady that was a member of uh, a secret society in England called Stella Matratina. And she says, in the opinion of an initiate who belonged for years to Stella Matratina, the dynamic force employed, known as Kundalini, is simply an electromagnetic force of which the sex force is a part, on which the adepts know how to play. The unseen hand behind the seemingly spiritism of this order, Stella Matratina, the unseen hand behind all the seemingly spiritism of this order is a system of very subtle and cunning hypnotism and suggestion. Further, the aim of this group, like of all subversive esoteric orders, is by the means of a such process as eutherism, meditation, uh, symbols, ceremonies, formulas, to awaken the force and produce a false illumination for the purpose of obtaining spiritual seership, which is at most clear audience and clear voyance. The ceremonies of the order are hypnotic, and by suggestion they create the necessary mental and astral um, atmosphere, hypnotize and prepare the members to be the willing tools in the hands of the controlling adepts. Here is an interesting point. This lady who was a member of Stella Matratina said that the same initiate has communicated to me the following conclusions concerning the group in question with permission to quote them verbatim. This person who was a member said, quote, I have been convinced that we as an order have come under the power of some very uh, evil occult order, profoundly versed in science, both occult and otherwise. Though not infallible, their methods being black magic, 
that is to say electromagnetic power, hypnotism, and powerful suggestion. This lady goes on to say about the Stellar Matratina, we are convinced that our order, that this order is being controlled by some sun order after the nature of the Illuminati, if not by that order itself. I have been convinced that we as an order have come under the power of some very uh, evil occult order profoundly versed in science, both occult and otherwise. Their methods being black magic, that is to say electromagnetic power, hypnotism, a powerful suggestion. And the real interesting sentence is we are convinced that the order is being controlled by some sun order after the nature of the Illuminati if not by that order itself. Some sun order? Uh, sun order, yeah, it's the cult of Solas and Vecti. On the earth today, the ancient imperial sun cult. Again, controlled, operated, financed, and directed by the Jesuits. Better understand who's running this world. Jesuits out of the Vatican. Next, a 1940 U.S. Congressional Report on the Secret Takeover of the United States by the British and Vatican Cabal. This is a 1940 uh, U.S. Congressional Report on a takeover of the U.S. Here in the Congressional Record, the top you will see, Steps Toward British Union, a World State. You're talking about world government. New World Order, Steps Toward British Union, a World State in International Strife. That should tell you something, a World State in International War. This was published back in 1940. It goes on to say, <clears throat> talks about the uh, whole New World Order, Steps Toward British Union. You can read this, you can stop it and uh, when you're watching this and read the whole thing if you want. Then on page 13 of this congressional report, it says this. <clears throat> Let me call your attention to the fact that on the reverse of the great seal of the United States, which appears on our dollar bills, you will find the exact symbol of the British Israel World Federation Movement. This symbol is also carried on literature of other organizations promoting a world government and a world religion. At the bottom of the circle surrounding the pyramid, you will find the wording Novus Ordo Seclorum. It was this new order that was advocated by Clinton Roosevelt several hundred years ago. And recently in a new book called Philip Drew, and now is followed by our government. So important that you understand there's a book called Philip Drew, which talks about the uh, continual conspiracy against America. And of course, it's British Israel conspiracy. Here's Simon Perez, Israel, becoming a knight of the Queen of England, British. So now we have a British-Israel World Federation. You need to wake up and find out none of this is happening by chance. All of this has been foretold a long time ago. Here is Cecil Rhodes, the British statesman and empire builder. Very, very famous uh, man. Back in 19, He died in 1902. In his last will, in, the, in his last, or actually in his first five wills, Cecil Rhodes, from which we get the word Rhodesia in Africa, he was in Africa for many years, taking over the African continent for the British royalty. Uh, in his first five wills, Rhodes repeatedly called for, he left money to finance, quote, a secret society. The true aim and objective whereof shall be the extension of the British rule throughout the world and eventually the ultimate recovery of the United States of America. In his sixth and last will, he created and gave money to create the Rhodes Scholarship. 
Well, I should tell you something about Rhodes Scholars, a secret society promoting British rule of the earth. Getting back to Woodrow Wilson, the 28th President of the United States. He said, as, as I read before, that people high up in government are frightened to talk about something that's so complete and so pervasive, you better keep your mouth shut. And now we go back to Philip Drew, the book. Well, Philip Drew, administrator, the book you can, you can find in libraries today, you can order it, uh, was written by a Colonel Edward Mandela House. Now, all of this takes us back to a very old but important book called Philip Drew, Administrator. Here is Colonel Mandela House, a Vatican British cabal secret agent. Mandela House, there he is. Here he is again with the President Woodrow Wilson, the author of Philip Drew, Administrator. That was his book. On the, one of the chapters, chapter... Six says, the prophet of a new day. And then there's another one, the exultant conspirators. Another chapter was the administration of the republic. That's us. And then Philip Drew outlines his intentions, which is a new era in Washington, an international crisis, the reform of our judiciary and a new code of laws. A prophet of a new day, exultant conspirators, new codes of law. Going on to uh, the next chapters, a federal incorporation act in which the federal government will become a corporation. Federal incorporation act. The new national constitution is another chapter. New national constitution and new state constitutions. And the next one is the rule of the bosses. And then the international coalition. That's what uh, George Bush was always talking about. It's an international coalition. This is old crap from a long time ago writing about what's coming. And then this chapter talks about the international coalition. You better wake up and find out what's really going on here. The unity of our northern half of the Western Hemisphere under a new republic. That's what we've got. Canada, Mexico, and America are all now in a new republic. An international coalition. All of this stuff was in the book Philip Drew many, many, many years ago. Glorious, uh, he writes in the book, uh, here's on chapter 4, Prophet of a New Day. Colonel Mandel House had messianic delusions, and he could see a spiritualized Marxism. He wanted to spiritually Marxism, to spread Marxism to the churches so that the people of America who were mostly religious people would slowly but surely be sucked into a Marxist, Leninist, Soviet, communist, uh, and, you know, conspiracy, and would never know the difference. And then on the bottom, it talks about carrying out the drive to create a new world order, domestically private and public partnerships, corporatist mechanisms drawn from House's fascist model. Efficiency, it was talked about House, House's vision of a responsive and efficient government unfettered by constitutional limitations. So they're going to uh, Marxize, Marx, Marxism in religion and to destroy the uh, United States Constitution and the United States of America and in the place of it will be a new world order the mechanism drawn from House, Colonel Mandel House's fascist model. And that's what we have today, world fascism. This goes all the way back to the late 30s. Here it is, President Woodrow Wilson sees the dawn, and he's making a speech to the Democratic leaders. 
And here in the Prophet of a New Day, Colonel Mandel, Mandel House says, I agree with you that the much to much that the much to be desired state of society of a communist society cannot be altogether reached by laws, however drastic. Socialism as dreamed by Karl Marx cannot be entirely brought about by a com comprehensive system of state ownership and by the quote leveling of wealth end quote. If that were done without spiritual leveling, the result would be larger, as you suggest. It wouldn't work. So you've got to get the churches involved. You've got to get the people who are the believers in religion. You've got to get them involved. So now we need to look at James Billington's book, Fire in the Minds of Men. Here is James Billington, one of the United States' great historians. Today, James Billington is the chief librarian for the Library of Congress. You don't get much better than that. Chief librarian for the Library of Congress. And in his book, here's all of his credentials. You can read his credentials. PhDs and doctors from everywhere from England to America. In his book, Fire and the Minds of Men, The Origins of the Revolutionary Faith, extraordinarily important book. Inside cover says, Fire in the Minds of Men, the Origins of the Revolutionary Faith. It goes on to say, the history of modern revolutions is the story of people in the grip of ideas and beliefs. In this masterful work, James Billington, whose first book, Icon and the Acts, established him as both a formidable scholar and a sparkling storyteller. But in this book, Fire in the Minds of Men, he traces the course of the communist revolutionary faith from its earliest origins in occult Freemasonry to the allegedly scientific Marxism of today. So keep in mind that what we call Marxist-Leninism was born in occult Freemasonry. And it's important you know the difference between regular American Freemasonry and the word occult Freemasonry, not the same thing at all. Occult Freemasonry is a secret society within the uh, system of Freemasonry in both America and Europe. It's a hidden group. Anyway, on page six in uh, Fire in the Minds of Men, in Fire in the Minds of Men, we see on page six, um, James Bellington says, and this is important, a recurrent mythic model for revolutionaries, early romantics, and young Karl Marx, and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus, the mythic model for revolution, was Prometheus, who stole fire from the gods for the use of mankind. The Promethean faith of revolutionaries resembles in many respects the general modern belief that science would lead men out of darkness into light. But there was also a more pointed millennial assumption that on the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set. Early during the French Revolution was born a solar myth of the revolution, suggesting that the sun was rising on a new era in which darkness would vanish forever. This image was implanted at a level of consciousness that simultaneously interpreted something real and produced a new reality. The new reality that the communist movement in Europe, what they sought, was radically secular and stringently simple. The idea was not the balanced complexity of a new American federation, but the occult or hidden simplicity of its great seal, the all-seeing eye, atop a pyramid over the words Novus Ordo Cyclotum. The re a recurrent mythic model, early romantics for young Karl Marx and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus, here in New York, Rockefeller Center is uh, the statue of 
Prometheus, right there in Rockefeller Center, New York. Prometheus who stole fire from the gods, the model for world communism. Here, David Rockefeller wrote in his book called Memoirs, he said, this is David Rockefeller's words, quoting it. He says, for more than a century, ideological extremists at either end of the political spectrum have seized upon well-publicized incidents to attack the Rockefeller family for inordinate influence they claim we wield over American political and economic institutions. Some even believe that we're part of a secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. And if that's the charge, I stand guilty and I'm proud of it. Fire and the Minds of Men, the Origins of the Revolutionary Faith. What a story this is to tell. So if you get the book, Fire in the Minds of Men, about one-third of the book of footnotes. And it talks about the year 2000 down here on the bottom. It talks about the year 2000, uh, 1958. We're talking about the year 2000 being mankind and the year 2000, Brooklyn Heights, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. A lot of interesting stuff going on here, but anyway, we'll move on. Even speculation about the year 2000 began not with the futurologists in the 1960s, but with a dramatic work written in 1780s by the same figure who invented, who invented the word communist. So back in the 1780s, the, guy, the people who came up with their communists were already talking about, looking and speculating about the year 2000. That's when it's going to start coming down. So... Also, the more pointed millennial assumption that on the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set, talking about the solar myth of the revolution. We have occult Masonic lodges called, and again, we trace this to occult Freemasonry, not modern day regular Freemasonry. This is an occult society. Back to this book for a moment. Remember the quote? We're convinced that the order is being controlled by some sun order. Yep, sun order. Now we go to the meat of the matter on some really interesting insight on this sun order symbolism. This is an ancient symbol and and the Egyptian, which means the dawn or the horizon. And the uh, and this represents the daily rebirth of the sun. Uh, remember, at the beginning, we talked about the sun rising between the mountains. And so it's the sun shaped as riding between the sacred mountains. Here in Masonic Orders of Fraternity, Manly P. Hall talked about this whole subject, and he said, Masonic Orders of Fraternity, the four words, the, dis the, the direct descendant of the essential program of the esoteric schools was entrusted to a group already well conditioned for the work. The guilds, trade unions, and similar protective and benevolent societies have been internally strengthened by the introduction of a new learning. The advancement of this plan required the enlargement of the boundaries of the philosophic overstate. A world fraternity was needed, sustained by a deep and broad program of education according to the method. Such a fraternity could not immediately include all men, but it could unite the activities of certain kinds of men, regardless of their racial or religious beliefs or the nations in which they dwelt. Important. These were the men of towardness, those sons of tomorrow, whose symbol was a blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. We'll come back to that. He goes on to say, while it is difficult to trace the elements of a pattern never intended to be obvious to start with, the broad shape of a design is dimly apparent. 
an invisible empire. So these were the men of towardness, Mr. Hall was talking about, the sons of tomorrow, whose symbol was the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. Here we have in North Korea, the communist North Korea, the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. Here in uh, a stamp out of, out of uh, Israel, the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east, Israel, the Akhenaten. Here we have the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east and the uprising. You will now begin to see how many times you will see the symbol of the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. Remember and keep in mind that this is all part and parcel of a secret society symbolism showing you even the politics in India, sunrise, communist Mongolia, uh, other communist countries. Then we have the state of Ohio, state of Kansas, uh, state of Arizona, state of Nevada, uh, Indiana, uh, Department of the Interior, Everywhere you look, you will see the sunrise behind the mountains of the east. This is all very well organized. It's all very well understood by the secret societies. Here in the state of New York, see the sunrise behind the mountains? All over the world, governments around the world use the symbol of a sun rising behind the mountains of the east. These are the men of tomorrow who have already know and they've already got the plan, what they're going to do, and how they're going to take over the world for the world communist movement. This is Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism, and people have no idea in the world that all of this, where it comes from, and what these symbols mean. But you're looking at the sunrise over the mountains of the east. You're seeing it on Apple. You're seeing it over Google Android. You're seeing it Microsoft Windows. You're seeing it in Samsung. You're seeing it on here and there and everywhere in the in the Twitter. You're seeing it on Facebook. You're seeing it on on all the high technology. You're seeing it in Miss Liberty, the American uh, silver dollar. Miss Liberty walking toward the dawn of a new day. See the sun rising. How about religions? Yep. How about religions? The yep. Sermon on the Mount, sun rising behind the mountains. You see it everywhere in churches, Christian colleges, Church of Christ, sun rising behind the mountains. Always everywhere in churches, religion, you will see the sun rising behind the mountains of the east. It's Christianity. Here in the church in England, you'll, show, you'll see the little altar has the sun rising. Sunrise Church, the Jews also bought into the secret agenda of the cosmocrats. Even Jews are heavily involved in this. Their god, Yahweh, was a sun god. Biblical and archaeological evidence for sun worship. It goes back to the solar symbol of the royal Israelite seal, royal emblem of the king of Judah, uh, figures of the sun disk, royal stamp. All of this is going back to sun worship. Expressions of Yahweh, of the host of heaven. Uh, some worship Deuteronomy, prophets, Job, book of Psalms, all dealing with sun worship. Uh, biblical archaeology, Helios. This is an article in biblical archaeology. It's called Helios in the Synagogue. The sun god was a popular subject in ancient synagogue mosaics. Still is today. It's everywhere in Judaism. Sun worship. The temple was laid out, so-called the temple was laid out, uh, east-west axis with the entrance on the east. Some have suggested that this permitted the sun to illuminate the inside of the holy temple on the first day of the autumn, so that this was related to the solar cult, or festival of Yahweh's enthronement. Yahweh is simply more, simply nothing more than the old ancient Roman sun god, 
coming out of the ancient and prehistoric world. All of this stuff is ancient pagantry and all of this nonsense you're hearing about uh, Yahweh and Jah and all of this stuff is all ancient pagantry. Here we have the sun worship in Jerusalem temple. We have the um, sunrise Torah, sunrise over Jerusalem, you know, and the Holy Covenant and all that stuff in Jerusalem, the sunrise. It's everywhere in all of their entertainment in Hollywood, which the Jews run Hollywood. They wrote books about it. And you will see in their big festivals, they have the sunrise. They're always the sunrise in Hollywood. Tells you something. Moses in the sunrise. Jehovah in the sun. Don't forget Allah, the moon god, but he was represented in the, you know, here we have the uh, Socialist Arab Federation with the sunrise behind the mountains of the east. Yes, and all the Islamic, uh, all the Islamic worlds all caught up in this stuff too. They don't know. They're like everybody else. They don't know. They have no idea in the world what's going on. So the Muslims are with their sunrise behind the mountains. Sunrise, sunrise, sunrise. Muslims and sunrise worship Allah. There's no God but the sun, Allah. So everywhere you look in Islam, you will find the sunrise and Islamic people worshiping Allah, the sun god, which is actually today a moon god. But if you go back in history, you'll see that Allah was originally a sun god. And then later on, it became a moon god. Now, let's look at the occult or hidden symbolism behind the demonic cosmocrats, behind the world revolutionary movement, the communist conspiracy today to destroy America and enslave the ignorant and unsuspecting mankind. Cosmocrats. Here's Marx and Engels, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Well, Engels wrote a couple of books. One's called Private Property and the State by Frederick Engels, and the, so and the other one was called Socialism by Frederick Engels, and down at the bottom you'll see where he mentions that the forces of the communist movement are going to carry us forward to the new day. There it is again, the new day. The new day of world communism. Fire and demands of men. Remember the millennium that the new day was dawning? Uh, well, here it is, the Soviet, 1923. This is in 1955. The Soviet Russia, its coat of arms, the official coat of arms for the Soviet Union was graphically uh, presents the dawn of a new day for the entire world. You see the sun rising on the new day for the world? If you just remember that uh, the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set, the solar myth of the revolution, and there it is with the Soviet Union's coat of arms, the dawn of a new day for the entire world. So, some kind of a sun order, yeah. Some kind of a sun order. Uh, here, when Obama becomes president, uh, the, the theme for Obama's presidency was called a new day. How interesting, a new day, the Soviet Marxist Leninist Soviet coat of arms. Soviet coat of arms graphically presents the dawn of a new day for the entire world. Well, that's the uh, theme for Obama a new day. Here you have uh, Hillary Clinton back in 2008 when she was running. Dawn of a new day. 2016, Hillary, the new day is dawning. It should by now become evident who these people are. A dawn of a new day of world communism. There it is. Some sort of a sun order. Hmm? New day dawns for our country. New day dawns for America. It's a new day for America. Yeah, the Communist Party on the bottom, it says, at the top, it says, dawn of a new day in America. Great. Uh, and it goes on the bottom, it says, Communist Party is ecstatic over the 08 election result. Voice of Marxist-Leninism announced hard work is just beginning. We finally got a full-blown Marxist-Leninist Soviet communist um, to 
take over America and destroy it. New Day. And down at the bottom, it talk, talks about the red covering all of USSR, shows how much the world was under the leadership of the Communist Party. The morning sun broke the hopeful glaze, gaze of students and teachers with the warm light of a Communist New Day. Well, that's what we got. Here's Paul Ryan. He sees a new day. I should tell you something about this guy. Paul Ryan sees a new day. Get it? Here's uh, Karl Marx, 1848, Karl Marx, Frederick Engels. Second paragraph says, Karl Marx has said that the, for society to change into a communist way of living, there would have to be a traditional uh, transitional period. There's Karl Marx, and he said this for all, in order for society to change from being a free country, a great nation, to change into a communist way of living. That's what we got, a change, change we can believe in. Pure Marxist-Leninist Soviet communism bullshit, the change we can believe in. Here you have a revolutionary party, can't have a re you can't have a revolution without a revolutionary party. So here it is on the left, you'll see the hammer and sickle, the new day of the U a new day in the USA. And on the right, you will see a constitution for the new social republic of the North America, a new day for America under world communism. This is our moment. And you'll see on the bottom, a new day is dawning. New day for New York. New day all over the world. Martin Luther King talked about facing the rising sun of a new day began. Here is uh, Senator McCain, and he said, quote, I have great respect for our other presidential candidates, particularly Senator Hillary Clinton, who has proved herself to be a champion for working families. Boy, it's certainly sure that we are at the dawn of a new day. So much for McCain and his dawn of a new day. Does that tell you anything? Here Obama hearkens a new day for America. A new dawn of a new day for America. Here's um, 89 year old singer, uh, singer and he has with him uh, Bruce Springsteen and they're singing about the dawn of a new day. Bruce Springsteen. Well, does that tell you something? Here in the Carpenter's Magazine, our new day dawns. Yeah, I'll bet it does. Yeah, Superman or, or Spider-Man, brand new day. Wrestlers, a new day. Uh, Oprah gets the first dibs on a new Obama album. What is it called? It's a new day. It's a new day. Everywhere you look. And oh, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter says, quote, I see the sun rising on a beautiful new day. This is back in 1976 at the dawn. Jimmy Carter sees a new day. I don't know what this is telling you, if you're getting a point. Obama hails the light of a new day in Afghanistan. Yep. A new day for Burma. Yep, good. A new day for Berlin. A new day. A new day for Mexico. A dawn of a new day. The Bible says in John, 1 John 5.18, the Bible says the whole world belongs to the devil. Well, that's what's going on. In Proverbs 29 in the Bible, the Old Testament, Bible Proverbs 29.17 says, Where there is no vision, the people run wild. When the people have no education, they have no understanding, they can't read, they're all on drugs with their baseball cap turned backwards and broken teeth and ignorant and can't read. Where there is no vision, the people run wild. The Bible goes on to say that the devil says, I will give you, he said this supposedly to Jesus, the devil said, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms that's been entrusted to me and I can give it to you, anyone I want. 
So in the New Testament, in Luke 4, 5, it says, all of mankind is now lost in a spiritual demonic circle with no way out that now grips the earth in a stranglehold. This, the whole earth is going in circles. The entire world of mankind is in a new day and they have no idea in a world what's going on. Here we have around the world joy at the new day dawning. School children wear masks of President Obama, even in India, celebrating the world new day where there is no vision, the people run wild. Here it is. He's disconnected from the vital forces of life. His instruction no longer comes from the nat nature and the heavens or from wise and sane men. It comes from the psychopaths and the institutions they erect. Man's mind is not his own. His thoughts are secondhand and his behavior conditioned. So look at all the kids dancing around with their Soviet communist flag, Chinese communist flag, Americans dancing for the new day. Ralph Nader sees the new day. Commercials during football games called the new day commercials. Even CNN has a program now on CNN, that great bastion of intellectual freedom. Uh, CNN has a new TV show called the new day. Isn't that interesting? Uh, New Day, it's a black, it's a red square. And Moscow, in Moscow, you'll remember, has a red square. Well, that's what the symbol for uh, CNN's new news program is a red square. Get it? Soviet Moscow red square. Uh, here's uh, the Las Vegas show celebrate the communist New Day. Um, the New Day has come, CBS television specials, retirement plans, you'll see the sun rising on a new day, new day in New York, new day is dawning. Incidentally, uh, here you'll see a uh, guy named Matt David, a spokesman for a group planning the attack, a super PAC pack called New Day for America. And the donors are lining up behind a super pack planning a Trump attack to attack Trump, and he says, the bottom line says, and he says, in addition to the Trump attack ads, the new day for America would go on to uh, all of this chaos that they are having no idea in the world. They're attacking and uh, Trump and the people of New York have no idea that it's a super PAC called New Day for America. Do you understand what's going on? The dawn of a new day, communist crap is not new, of course. Back in 1939, we had the World's Fair, 1939, before the Great War. And the, the theme for the World Fair was uh, dawn of a new day. Uh, here it is again, dawn of a new day, the New York World's Fair. It's going all the way back to 1939, before the Second World War. They were already preparing Americans, New York will, uh, World Fair, World's Fair. New York, remember? Communism, dawn of a new day, World's Fair, dawn of a new day again. Even a uh, song was written about Horace Height, wrote a song called Dawn of a New Day. Here it is, a sun rising on a planned thing in the, uh, in the uh, World Fair. Incidentally, Adolf Hitler said, even Adolf Hitler, the old Marxist, communist, Nazi, fascist, uh, fed the German people the same scam, the old Vatican, Jesuit, British bullshit, and it worked for a while. It goes on to say at the top, Germany can be saved only by a dictatorship of the national will and determination to take action. He goes on to say, Adolf Hitler says, my fellow Germans awaken, a new day is dawning. I'm telling you, this stuff has been around for a long time. Nazis, fascists, communists, morons, lunatics, all of them are into this new day that's dawning. Here's this Nazi sunrise, sunrise of the Nazis. 
here's a, <clears throat> the uh, Discovery Channel has a series on Adolf Hitler. And the nation is in dar darkness, and it was a promise of a new dawn. And for the failed artists, it was a chance to change history. Remember, a change we can believe in. You're talking about Adolf Hitler. You're talking about communism, change. Myself, I'd just like to see America the state the way it was, freedom and liberty and justice for all. It would be a nice place to live. But no, we've got people who are so profoundly stupid. They are dancing in the streets for the change of Nazism, communism. Fatherland, fatherland, show us a sign your children have waited to see. The morning will come, the new dawn, when the world is mine. Symbol of the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. It's everywhere in Nazism. You'll see it everywhere. Sun rising over the mountains of the east. Nazism. Again, my fellow Germans wake the new dawn. Jewish Kabbalah is full of this crap. The Jewish Kabbalah is full of this crap. Nine and a half mystics, the Kabbalah today talks about the one who is caught between the suns of a dying and a dawning new day. And the Christian churches, of course, they have been spreading this demonic bullshit for years. Here we're talked about having identified himself by name. Jesus further claims for himself the title of the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star, implying that he is the Jewish Messiah from David's line. And second, that he is, his coming will mark the dawn of a new day. Christian radio, Christian teachings, dawn of a new day for America. New day community church, sunrise over the mountains, get it? Sunrise over the mountains, a new day dawning, community, churches. Every time you see, it always will be a sun rising over the mountains of the, of the east. It's a new day. Everywhere you look in Christianity, all the churches talk about the sun of a new day, the dawning of a new day. It's everywhere. Grand new day. We could go on for hours showing that this is the Christian theme that's everywhere. New Day Christianity. So like I said, this entire thing, this entire communist apparatus, talking about the New Day Church, New Day Faith, coming of the New Day Church, everywhere you look in Christianity is the New Day, the dawning of a new day. Why? Because the entire world Christian community has been taken over a long time ago by the cosmocrats, the world rulers of this darkness, the New Day Church, New Day Religion. Remember the uh, original uh, television show called V, in which, uh, if you remember, the original was quite a few years ago. But uh, ABC, that great bastion of world communism, that's why it's called ABC, I think it's all about communism, or NBC, nothing but communism, or CBS, a communist broadcasting system, all of it is Marxist-Leninist communism. But to prove it, look at the uh, uh, ABC Disney created a second uh, series called V. If you'll remember, V was a story. It says a full V preview now online. It says ABC has released this new full preview of V, which is the re imaging of the 1980, that's when it came out originally, 1980 miniseries about the first, about the world's first encounter with an alien race in which the aliens call themselves the visitors and have a seemingly friendly agenda with their uh, coming, these aliens who come to Earth, they have a seemingly friendly agenda that may or may not be covered for something more malevolent. In the TV series, so-called visitors distribute a book explaining their mission here on Earth. 
and the booklet is called Welcome to the Dawn of a New Day. Get it? ABC, Disney, World Communism, Fascism. Get it? Here's Adolf Hitler with his clenched fist for Nazism. And here's the Democratic National Chairman, Chair Deborah Weiserman Schultz proudly displaying the communist, Marxist, Leninist, Nazi symbol. My Lord and my God, this country is profoundly lost. Here in the top, you'll see Hitler with his raised fist of the revolutionary New Day that was coming. Beneath you will see Obama with his raised fish, fist for the New Day. Now Hollywood and the politicians who run this country look at America as a bunch of zombies. And so they're saying to the American people, we're here, we're dead, and get used to it. The American zombies. In other words, they're saying to you, Hollywood is saying to you in their movies and television shows, you are a bunch of zombies. That's all you are. It's a new day, the rise of a new world order in which there will be no freedom, liberty, justice, intelligence, humanity, nothing. It's going to be a rise of zombies all over America and ultimately all over the world. So, with your new day and the, and the change we can believe in, you can flush it down the toilet. Why? Because the American people are ignorant, ill-informed, unread, and downright stupid, and they have been bought into, and they have no idea in the world where this stuff really comes from. Democracy, Nazism, Communism, it's all the same ancient conspiracy to destroy civilization and create in the stead of a Western civilization, Christian civilization, a new order based on Nazism and communism. A new day is dawning. My Lord and my God, wake up. This is Jordan Maxwell. We'll talk to you again another time. Thank you.